Now for a reading of Die Hard Christmas, written by Doogie Horner, illustrated by J.J. Harrison, the illustrated holiday classic. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and up in the tower, everyone was partying except one wallflower. John McLean missed his wife. Things just weren't the same since Holly had moved out west, moved west and changed her last name. He tried to win her back, but still she said no, while unbeknownst to them, there was trouble below. A truck had pulled up, and who should disembark but fourteen men whose intentions were dark. They spoke not a word and unloaded big crates. They cut the phone lines and locked all the gates. Carl swept the ground floor, shooting every guard dead, while visions of bearer bonds danced in his head. John took off his shoes, making fists with his toes. It actually worked. Well, what do you know? When out in the lobby there arose such a clatter, he sprung to the door to see what was the matter. When what to his wondering eyes did should appear, holy crap, there are terrorists in here. John hid under a table where no one could see and watched Hans question Mr. Takagi. <laughs> I'm going to count to three. There will not be a four. Just give me the codes to open the vault door. I don't know the codes, so go ahead and shoot. Okay, said Hans Gruber, and ruined Takagi's suit. <laughs> John tried to call the cops by pulling an alarm, but instead called the bad guys who tried to cause him harm. Poor John. But John killed Tony, who had very small feet, and sent him and sent him to the terrace as a Yule tide treat. He put on a he put on a Santa hat on, he put a Santa hat on the German, and eyes all aglow wrote, "Now I have a machine gun." Ho ho ho. Carl was furious. Tony was his brother. He chased John across the roof, and they shot at each other. John was able to escape through the ventilation shafts. Come out to the coast, he sighed. We'll have a few laughs. At Nakatomi Tower, Sergeant Powell appeared. He checked the whole lobby and saw nothing weird. He was pulling away, but didn't get far before Marco landed on the hood of his car. Powell drove backwards, drove away backwards, screaming in fright. Welcome to the party, pal, John yelled with delight. More police arrived, the FBI and a SWAT team, but Hans didn't mind. It was all part of his scheme. More, more rapid than eagles, his henchmen they came, and, and he radioed and shouted, and called them by name. Now Eddie, now James, now Franco, now Uli, Uli, on Fritz, on Carl, Harry Long, and on Ruli. They shot the SWAT tank with a surface-to-air missile and knocked it away like the down of a thistle. John McLean was angry indeed. He blew up two terrorists and called them jerkweed. <laughs> Ellis told Hans, Bubby, I'm your white knight. Hans shot him dead, giving the hostages a fright. Hans went to go check on the explosive fuse and saw that poor John wasn't wearing any shoes. John fled from Carl and Hans, but alas, he had to run barefoot over sharp broken glass. Shoot the gloss. His feet, how they hurt. His soul's oh so bloody. John crawled to the bathroom and called his good buddy. John was weary and ready to throw in the towel until he got a pep talk 
from Sergeant Al Powell. Powell was chubby and plump, a right jolly old cop, and he trusted the cowboy in the tattered tank top. But a reporter was probing into McLean's life and revealed that Holly was actually John's wife. Hans quickly flipped over the gold picture frame. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. McLean. His clothes all tarnished with ashes and soot, John staggered to the roof, bloody and barefoot. The explosives were wired to the rooftop with care in hopes that hostages would soon be there. John warned everyone that the roof would soon blow as the chopper strafed him with high-powered ammo. <laughs> Around his waist, he tied a fire hose tight and, screaming an oath, jumped into the night. He dangled in the air and gritted his teeth while flames encircled the tower like a wreath. Fiercely fighting his way back inside, John yelled out, Hans! He was trying to hide. He was done trying to hide. He limped into the vault like an old man on crutches, only to find Holly in filthy clutches. John dropped his gun and put his hands on his head. It seemed he and Holly would soon be dead. But with a secret gun taped to his back, John shot Hans in a surprise attack. Hans fell out the window, still holding Holly's arm, and slowly, deliberately, deliberately raised his firearm. The tenacious villain held on by his nails till John unhooked Holly's watch and said, Happy trails. Bearer bonds fluttered like a fresh-fallen snow as Holly embraced her blood-splattered sp sp bow. So Merry Christmas to all, be kind to one another, and most of all, yippee ki -yay, motherfucker. What a fantastic book. Merry Christmas, everybody.